Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. An issue that, that comes up frequently is people talk about this tendency to tense up. And even when it's not, there's nothing there that really provokes it. It just is this sense of tensing. And, and so we can, you know, if we notice it, we can correct it and we can kind of like, oh, okay, I let go, but then it comes back again. And uh, so the issue is how do we change that so that it is uh, less of an issue as, uh, as we move through our lives? Because so much of the time it's just building up. It's just the, the you know, the tension, the tight shoulders, neck, back, et cetera, things just grab. And uh, we have um, uh, very little awareness of it until the pain kicks in. And then we say, oh, oh yeah, we sh I should do something about that. So the good news is uh, that's the price you, you pay for being a human. So we have millions of years of evolution, which have favored the genetic expression that is hypervigilant. It's always looking for danger. It's always looking for, you know, how to solve the problem and how to uh, how to prevent things from happening. So there's this a tendency of the nervous system to want to to do that, and the way it it response at that pre-conscious level is to is muscular tension. That's the way we that that unconscious stress response expresses itself. And so just about every human you know will have this um, you know this this situation. So that is also the bad news. So it's that's you're you're human. So it's that's 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 the game that we're playing. The the other good news is that we happen to be living at a time when we have the luxury of actually doing something about that, where we can actually use our consciousness, our mind, to rearrange our lives in such a way to train new patterns of behavior, create new conditions of thought that, that take us out of that, that expression that pre-conscious expression that is so universal. And so it's something that um, it's the game that we're playing, which is how do we, how do we change this? How do we cha change the way that our bodies express themselves so that if we don't have to wait for another million years of evolution that we can evolve in present time? And uh, so the um, learning how to create these new ways of moving, which take us out of that pre-conscious mind, the body sense, the eye of flesh, and move it into a, a you're bringing awareness to that pre-conscious and then when that happens, then you can feel you can move consciously, you can move intentionally. And when you do that, every time you do that, it changes your programming. It changes your nervous system. It clears out some of the noise. And if you make it into something that is part of your life, not just something that you do, you know, 15 minutes of Tai Chi every day, but it's like, no, no, all day, you're consciously moving. You're consciously bringing awareness. You're feeling in, and you're actually making making this happen. Then we are reprogramming the nervous system, and it's not an overnight thing. It's something that we're, like I say, overcoming a lot of history to uh, you know, to change. But uh, it's that's where the fun is. It's where we get a chance to actually become more. So um, you know, one of the things that Peter brought up is, you know, the relationship of the connective tissue system, which is that living matrix that, that ties everything together. It connects every cell in your body. 
it's, you know, if you were to take out everything else but the connective tissue system, you would still have a human form there. It's like, it's sort of this, this mesh that, that stuff gets put in. And um, so that connective tissue system is the living matrix. It's a system of, of energy and information that, that animates so much of what we do. So um, tying that together with the concept of shoe and sure. So if you remember from Taiji Chuan through the Western Gate, I talked about shoe and sure, which is the shoe XU is the insubstantial and sure SHI is the substantial. And it's really important for understanding anything that we're doing because it is, it is a relationship that is fundamental to everything, even more fundamental than yin and yang. And it is this quality is how much substantiality is there. And by substantiality, we can think of it as like, like density or fixedness, but not just in the physical level, but in the mental or emotional or the energy level as well. It's like, how much can we, um, how much is something in a fixed or unmoving state is how, how, uh, uh, how substantial it is. You can also think of it as an extension, you know, like how much it's, you were reaching out with it. And at the core of substantial and insubstantial, it's always, always, always a relationship. There is no insubstantial or substantial standing by itself. It's, they're always two aspects of the same thing. So, and it's entirely dependent on you, on what, you're, what you consider to be substantial and insubstantial, what you consider to be solid, what you consider to be real is, is the substantiality. So the more real something is, the more substantial it is. So, and the more solid something is, the more substantial it is. And it doesn't mean it is truer. It just means it's denser. And um, so the, when we're thinking of substantial and insubstantial, it's always in comparison to its partner. And then we get to, we get to vary the amount of substantiality by how we think about it. So it is, it, nothing has, is substantial or insubstantial in and of itself. It is how we relate to it. And at the core of that is how you think about it or how much you think about it or how much you, you regard it, how much you are, how much awareness you have on that thing. And bring it into our Taiji form, it's what, where is my mind? Whenever I'm, say if I'm moving my right arm, that has become substantial because it is where my attention is going. I'm bringing attention to that. So it is getting more, it is becoming more substantial, more solid, okay? It's, in this case, it's also extending, but it's the, the fact that it's, you know, it has more density. You know, we think of like say light is is very insubstantial. We can, and it is compared to my fist. But light itself has is is both substantial and insubstantial. So light looks like, you know, it's 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 nothing, except for it is something. If someone to shine a very bright light in your eyes directly into your eyes, you'd uh, it would feel very substantial. If you were to take a laser beam, which is coherent light, and you were to direct it at something, then you're going, you can do surgery with that, or you can cut through steel. So it has, it, it can be very substantial if we regard it as such. And so it's our relationship to it. So in our Taiji form, let's say we, we are always, always, always conscious of the substantial and the insubstantial. And, you know, some of the, you know, the, the great ones, they said, like, 
hey, if you if you are not aware of substantial and insubstantial, then you're wasting your time. And it is at the core of, of, of our practice. It's also at the core of your life. It's like you know you can when you become aware of that, you can notice what has become substantial or insubstantial for you. The music that's playing in the background is insubstantial until you say, oh, I know that song. And like you start humming along with it and suddenly you have created substantiality by bringing attention or awareness to that thing. If you're bringing conscious attention, not just in you know, the, back of the back of your mind, if you bring conscious intentionality to it, then it becomes even more substantial. So the, um, when we think of that in terms of our connective tissue system, then where we bring our attention has a lot to do with how bunched up we get in our bodies, how tense, how much tension we hold in. Because by bringing attention and intention into the body mind, we're awakening something which for many people, it's asleep their whole life that they have no, no awareness of that uh, conscious movement or conscious feeling. They just, it's just something that they just, they just go through their lives and, and it's happening at a pre-conscious level. But the more you can bring that awareness to it, the more you wake up. You are waking up parts of your brain that are asleep and you know, kind of atrophied or nascent or just they're just not they haven't had a chance to express themselves so what we're doing with so much of this is bringing that conscious awareness. we're slowing everything down and bringing conscious awareness to these these um these parts of our body and when we do that when we relax the muscular tension that allows it frees up the connective tissue system to do its work a little bit better. It gets to express itself a little bit more and, uh, and the energy and information moves more freely. Um, any questions or thoughts on, on any of this? Does that, uh, that make sense? Good, 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 everybody good. Yeah, Peter. Uh, yeah, question, you know, uh, I, I'm thinking that the, um, I'm connecting this point about the thought and the consciousness sort of making things substantial. I'm putting that together with your point about uh, participatory consciousness. It seems that consciousness is not just like observing. It ha maybe it has to actually be a consciousness that participates in you know, the structure, the form, the body, the world to, to uh, make it substantial. And that's really interesting, you know, what, what that is, participatory consciousness. That's a, that's a very good point, Peter. At the consciousness has many forms and it has a yin side, which is just observation. You're just, you're witnessing or you're just observing what's going on. And that's the, you know, a yin aspect. It's a, there's a passivity to that. But participatory consciousness, it says, Put me in, coach. I want to play, and so you're actually involved in life. You're it's a young expression. You're it's an extension, and consequently, things become more substantial by your participation. You're saying whatever it is that I'm participating in, to whatever degree, that is the degree that this means something to me. This means this says that. Hey, this I care about this particular thing, and so at that point you can you can engage with it, and cool stuff happens. So it's a it's entirely different than just you know being mindful of something, which is a passive uh, way of approaching. It's just sort of it's an observatory thing, and both are necessary. One has to. Have both the yin and the yang of it, but that uh, that participatory consciousness is, I believe, essential to a full life. 
So anybody else? Okay, moving on. All right, so let's take that and uh, a step further. And another issue that keeps coming up is about Sung Kwa. And just to, and this is very much related to the two points we've already talked about, that of tension, holding tension at an unconscious level, and the uh, shoe and sure, the insubstantial and substantial, and how we create substantiality by bringing awareness to things. So um, in Sun Kwa, it's really important because it is establishes the foundation for the whole system. It establishes your connection with planet Earth and how you are going to move around, how you're going to navigate life, how you're going to navigate your, your actions, your, your body movement. And so your capacity to be sung, now sung in this case means to, to release into the intrinsic support of your connective tissue system. So this goes back to that first point. It's like, if we get, you know, if we can release into the connective tissue system, that means that we're letting go of extraneous muscular tension. Doesn't mean all muscular tension, just means extraneous, that which is not necessary. So we learn to, to modulate our, the muscular activity consciously so that we are not um, pre-consciously uh, reacting and, and tensing up things that don't need to be tensed. And so the more we can trust our foundation, that is our, the way that our legs and hips hold up our torso, the more we can do that, the more we can ah, we can relax. Because the way most people stand, it is, it's precarious. It's, you know, they're, they're leaning backward, they're, and it requires a lot of muscular tension just to stand up. But if you get Sun Kwa, then you are using the appropriate support structures to allow your body to, your upper body particularly, to release tension and the legs to do the work that they're designed to do. So um, I just came up with, with an idea, I, it might not be new to others, but it's, it's, it's kind of a, a way of approaching this because the Sung is not just an idea, it's not just some, you know, I've taught many ways about how to get more Sung, but the, um, it's not just an idea. There is a feeling there. There's a feeling of sung. It's and I think it's really important to know what um, what that feels like and to how to get there quickly, easily, and learn to trust it. And when that happens, everything works a little more smoothly. So um, uh, so this is a an idea and. I want to point out that it's not a something that is ideal. It's just a way of getting more familiar with Sung. And as you as that happens, then you move more and more in the direction of being able just to go there without without any you know any help. But this is a way of of, of helping. So why don't you stand up and let's uh, let's play around with this. Okay, stand with your feet about a hip width apart. And so the, I want to make a distinction between yang extension and yin support. So if you were to 
push away from the earth. So as if you're going to kind of push your head up toward the ceiling. This is a young extension. So we're all very familiar with that. You know, they're like, we're lifting up, we're doing a, a squat or something, we're, you know, we're pushing away from the earth. Now, go the other direction and just kind of uh, drop in to your legs. So that now you're feeling the yin support. You're no longer pushing away from the earth, but you're, uh, you're, you're relaxing into it. Now you're gonna push away. Which you can come up and feel what that's like. So what you right now you're creating separation between you and your root, and your root as a result becomes compromised because you're pushing away from the earth. And now, ah, drop again, and feel now, feel the connection with the earth as you do that. Feel that the heaviness of your body as it drops down into your legs. But also notice that your upper body can get very relaxed whenever you have that. Now push away again. Feel that extension, that yang extension. You're using your yang muscles to create length. And now release and uh, drop down. And that's your yin support. So let's step forward with your left foot and pick up your right heel and push away. Feel that yang extension and release down yin support. That yin support is what we're referring to as sung. So now we're releasing down into that intrinsic structure of the body. We've created a shape. We're saying, okay, this shape it is sufficient to hold me up. I can trust this shape. I can relax into this shape. I can hold that. Now I'm going to push away again. Oh, I'm not, I'm no longer relaxing into that shape. I'm extending. I'm getting taller. And now ah, release down and feel that. Feel that. Ah. Now go to your back foot, your right foot, pick up your front heel. Same idea, you're pushing away and ah, dropping down, feeling that yin support. Feel the solidity. Just and pause for a moment and just feel what that's doing to your energy, your, your energy. How that sense of connection with the earth that comes from this creates a it opens the, the, the energy gate in the foot. Now push away again and sink, release. Good. Now put your right foot forward. Now pick up your left heel, all the weights in your front leg, and now you're pushing away and release. And push away. Feel what that feels like to push away. Feel how that breaks your root. Now sink back and feel ah that yin support coming up. Feel how much how much you can relax your back, your neck. Relax. Just allow your 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 sacrum to drop and just feel that sinking there. Go to your your left foot and pick up your front heel, push away, and sink. And push away, extend, yang, and sink, yin. Feel into the yin. Feel the support there. Feel the power that comes with that. Feel the relaxation in your arms as you do that. So the more we can trust this yin support and the yin energy that accompanies it, the more we can let go of that tension in the neck and the back and the shoulders, the, the jaw, 
all these things that we hold tight. Good. So now we're going to we're going to go from the back foot to the front. So the left foot is holding me up now. So I'm going to push away from from the ground. So this is young extension, and then I feel the ball of the right foot set my knee and uh, release down into the front leg. Remember, this is not this is not the ideal way of doing. This is just a way of familiarizing yourself with the with the sung. So feel the sung in that front leg. Now push away. Feel that yang and feel the back, the left foot, the left ball. Set the left knee and ah, sink into that. So you're dropping into that. You're feeling that yin support and push away and. Go into the front and sink. And push away and sink. Good. And put your left foot forward. And push away and right ball, set the right knee and sink. Push away from the earth and into the left ball, set the left knee and sink. So just feel into the stability of that. Now we're going to take it. A step further and using that familiarity that we have here we're going to now feel the ball of the left foot we're going to set the left knee and without pushing away we're just going to sink and and just release into that now feel the ball of the right foot push your right knee forward and release into the right the left wall so so it's right ball, set the right knee, and without pushing away, you're just going to kind of feel into that and sink down into that. And notice that as you get familiar with this, you don't need that dropping in. It, but it helps to, to, to do that as, you, as you're developing that, that awareness. So now as you're going into the, the front leg, you're going to feel the feel the ball the, the left foot set the left knee and this time you're going to spiral down to the left so you're loading up that left claw you're releasing down into it and you're just feel your arms your arms are nice, nice and relaxed your shoulders are nice and relaxed and you're feeling into that support and now you just turn your body back to center and now you're going to feel the ball of the right foot or the left foot yeah the right foot i'm sorry the back one you're going to feel the ball set the knee and spiral down to the right. You're gonna do that, you're gonna kind of, and when I say spiraling down, you're sinking and turning at the same time. And then you turn back to center. And then step back with your left foot, put your right foot forward. So feel the ball of the right foot, push your right knee forward without loading it up. You're just pushing that forward and you're, Feeling the ball, you're setting the, and you're spiraling down to the left. Feel that. So you feel you're loading up that right leg. Just feel that you're sung, okay? And then turn to center. Now feel the ball, the left foot. You set the left knee and you're gonna release the left claw. You're gonna spiral down to the right. So you're loading that up and turning back to center. So we're getting that feeling of what that feels like to be sung where you don't need the up and down. The up and down is a way of, of training awareness of, of this of this song. So you bring your feet back to center. And just as you inhale, this time without moving your body, you're just gonna just feel the inhale lifting you up, expanding and then Exhale, sinking. And inhale. And exhale. Feel that deep letting go inside. So this is something you can do 100 times a day. Just take a breath and ah, relax. You can do it standing, sitting, whatever. It's just anytime you are Inhaling, you're, you're uh, activating the, the, um, 
the uh, sympathetic nervous system, creating that in the doing aspect, and then exhaling, that's parasympathetic, that's more into the feeling, the sensory. So we're doing this little dance that uh, between the sensory and the motor neuro neurons. <sighs> and each time we do it, each time we get a, a, a familiarity with what that feels like to be sung, we can then, uh, we can learn to activate that just by our thoughts. So why don't you grab a seat, let's talk, see if anybody has any questions or thoughts about this, and, and then we'll go on to some other stuff. Nick, you got some. You're on mute. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I just want it's more of an observation. Um, and I don't know if this is true for everybody, but I noticed I started playing with the particularly with the with the pushing away part of it, right? Uh, especially in the first couple of first two parts. Um, and I and I was uh, trying to maintain the same level of relaxation in my upper body and found it to be extremely difficult. Um, <laughs> takes a lot more work. <laughs> a lot more, you know, mental letting go of things um, when you're pushing away like that. It's, it's really illustrative. Thanks. Beautiful, beautiful. Richard. Um, this seems to me to be a terrific experience of the insubstantiality of yang and the substantiality of yin. Yes, good observation. And you know, and they're interchangeable. So you can go back and forth, but but in this situation, you're right. I, I think it I think it does emphasize that aspect quite a bit. So that's good observation. Rick. Yeah, interestingly enough, I've been incorporating this into my morning and evening rituals over the last several years. And I, I was also having a similar problem to what Nick was doing until I realized that I shouldn't be working. I should be relaxing. So the more you work at it, the more I worked at it, the tighter I became. The more I let relaxation cascade down from the bottom to the top and then back up again, the more pleasure I felt, the more ease I felt. <laughs> it's a matter of having fun rather than working at least for me <laughs> i like that that's good that's good uh valerie you had something i just found it uh such a simple way to really demonstrate what richard mentioned about the substantiality of yin and the insubstantiality of yang um just when i would sink down like when we would go into the back foot and unweight the front foot and drop down immediate filling immediate and then going up it's like well there's still stuff there but not nearly as much so it was stupid simple <laughs> almost <laughs> simple. i like stupid simple <laughs> <laughs> yep, me too. Me too. <laughs> peter you had some uh, yeah, two things. One observation, I actually started to feel a bit more, uh, especially in the, um, the sinking, uh, what might be the feeling you're talking about. It's sort of, it's sort of subtle, but it's definite. Uh, I don't know how to describe it. It's a little bit non-localized. It's sort of like, like the leg is in the feeling. It's not in a, uh, but but it's encouraging to feel something, you know, and uh, and it sort of it sort of fits with the concept. The other thing is a question. If I understand, we're you know we're doing the physical up and down movement as kind of training wheels for for the essence of the 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 the, uh, the change, the action into um, into uh, so the sinking uh, and um, uh, 
and we don't and we can eventually dispense with it does it make sense to sort of just try to gradually make the physical movement smaller like smaller and smaller that, that's what i did there at the end where i said just having your breathing okay using that to elevate you so you're not you're not even moving you're not pushing away but you can also feel the yang you know from from just by inhaling and then exhaling in so it uh so you uh and you can whatever gradient you need to get your 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 body mind's attention is the is the right gradient for you so you can and i'd say you know make it big and then smaller 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 like we do with all this stuff it's we just you start gross and then you get finer and finer until it looks like you're doing nothing but you're creating a huge effect and uh, the other thing the, to your first point there i believe that an activity like this is rehabilitative to uh, a lot of issues that people have with their legs and feet and things like that a lot of people have you know deterioration of like you know sensations in their feet or neuropathy or things like that as they get older and to be able to restore it by increasing the chi flow and that increasing your awareness in your legs your sensory awareness then you can actually bring stuff back you know i talked a few weeks ago about about how uh, uh our friends in uh, in joshua tree david uh, uh zimmerman how he had a stroke a couple of years ago and was completely paralyzed on the right side of his body and you know by doing this what we're talking about he you would not notice it but to meet him you would not think that he was he was he had been paralyzed so recently but he actually has restored a, a big part of his motor function by accessing the sensory neural network and so i think that an exercise like this is a way of very gently doing that gently creating new neural connections keith you had something You just turned your you just turned your mute on, Keith. There you go. Uh, that was you used the the term a couple of times restorative. I found that an extremely comfortable yet expanding. Uh, I don't even want to call it an exercise, but I I that was very restorative to me, and you know I found it very comfortable which is new because a lot of the Tai Chi things that I'm doing, I find tough as I'm trying to work through the movements, but that was very, very comfortable. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. Excellent. Um, yeah. And it's, it's so simple as Valerie said, stupid, simple. So, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it, it something that, and you can do any time, just, you know, just sitting in your chair, you can, Fill up and uh, release, you know, just boom. Just do that and get it so that you're training your body mind to like the not being hypervigilant. You're training it to not be in a ball of tension all the time and, and like it. So that that's fun. Cool. Um, anybody else before we move on here? Okay, so let's take this. So we've got Shushur, insubstantial, substantial. We've got Sung. We've got the uh, Sung Kwa. Um, let's fit that into the movement we've been working on the last few weeks, which is the, uh, the expression of Ji Jin, which is the press movement. And we'll just do a real simple uh, movement here, but I want to incorporate this, this idea, this Sung idea, because last week, if you remember, I was pointing out that, that we have this Yang extension where we're, both arms are coming out, kind of like two vectors coming out and creating this arrow coming forward. 
but it, they're both yang, they're both extension. So how do we find our yin? And that's what we just played with there. That is being able to uh, settle in and feel the yin in the legs, the substantial yin in the legs, which allows for that yang extension to come, uh, to come out through the arms. Okay, so let's, uh, let's want you to stand up and we'll play around with that. So let's um, step out. Let's get the three pillars established first, just so we get that, that real sense of that energy connection. I know you're all pretty pumped up right now, but let's, let's complete the, the thing. So you're feeling the balls of your feet. And here, push away and uh, release down and just feel yourself sinking into your legs, sinking, really feeling that firm foundation there, centering over the balls of the feet, but spreading throughout the whole feet. This is like, like a, an hourglass is kind of the sand kind of dropping down, and push through that, reach with the crown of the head, so even as you're sinking down, you're still reaching. So you have these two poles in opposition. Tuck in the chin. Open the jade pillow gate. Relax your lower back. Drop your sacrum. Be lifting from the clavicular notch. So you're feeling your arms, your, sh your shoulders opening, your chest opening. Point your index fingers and feel the energetic coherence. Feel the chi in your hands. Reach with your elbows. Open the shoulder joints. Bow down to the left. Feel yourself sinking. Bow down to the right, sinking. Really loading up. Just pause in that and just feel the deliciousness of having your three pillars in, your central equilibrium, your energetic coherence, and you're unkinking the hose. You're allowing the, the big gates to open and allow the energy to circulate freely. Feel into your hands and feel that chi that's just coursing through. Oh, so I'm gonna face this way. We wanna put your left foot forward. Feel your, the ball of your right foot. You wanna feel the left foot forward. You're set, you feel the ball of the foot, set the knee. And reach with your elbows, bring your hands up. Bring, you can do it any number of ways. You can hand to wrist, hand to palm, hand to the palm of my hand to the heel of the other hand. Let's just do that one for just for standardist sake. Just have the that there's lots of ways to do a press, but we're doing that. So we're remember where you where you, Expressing Ji Jin, which is this one of these eight Bamen, the eight energy gates. You're reaching with the elbows, reaching with the wrists, reaching with the fingers. And you're push away from the earth, sink, re, rising up, and then ah, sink down. Feel that. Feel you sung into that leg. So you're, the expression, the young expression is coming from the yin support. And so 
to the ball of the left foot, set the left feet, spiral down to the left and separate your hands. Feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee. And we're gonna go back to pushing away and sinking down. So we're, we're, we're doing that just to establish that. So we're, we're releasing down. And as you release down, you're spiraling down to the left as you do that in your right leg and turn your body, reaching out with your arms. Arms are very relaxed. Your elbows are reaching out. So feel the sung in your right leg. Feel the arms are very relaxed. Your wrists are relaxed. Your shoulders are relaxed. You're reaching with the elbows, opening the shoulder joints. Feel the chi in your arms as you do this. Now feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee. We're gonna push away from the earth just for, so as we do that, and then as we sink, we spiral down to the right and the arms come up a little bit. So we're reaching up with the, with the wrists as we sink down into the, the left qua. Now feel the ball of the left foot. You push the left knee forward. And we're going to rise up. We're going to extend up, yang. And then ah, spiral down to the right in the left leg. So the left leg, we're using that as our support. We're spiraling down to the right. Rotate your left forearm so that your, your forearm is reaching out. And now you're going to turn. And as you turn, the right hand meets the heel of the left hand, reach with the elbows, sink into that left claw. Sink as you do that. Let's do that again. So this is our, this is our press, press movement, the G Jin. Okay, now feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, you come up, open, and now feel the right ball, set the right knee, and you're gonna push away, you're gonna come up in your right leg, and then ah, spiral down to the left. You're loading up that right claw now. It's very sung, and turn. Feel how full that posture feels. We did a roll back here and just feel how powerful that feels. Feel all the, the energy that's being expressed as chin in this posture. You're reaching with your elbows, opening the shoulders, reaching with the fingers. The arms are relaxed. The support is coming on that yin qua. Feel the Ball of the right foot, set the right knee, push away, coming up, arms come up and sink and reach up with your arms as you are sinking into the right qua. Feel the left foot, push the left knee forward, push away with the left leg, you're coming up and sink and spiral down to the right. You're loading in there. So feel, this is like drawing back the bowstring. We're loading up here. We're creating this, this dynamo. And then we can then turn and bring the hands together. This is like releasing the arrow. We reach with the elbows, reach with the wrists. Feel the yin support of the left leg. Feel the power coming out of the arms. Not muscular power, but chin. And hands come down. Turn. And just pause for a moment. And just in this neutral posture, 
Just feel the chi that's circulating throughout your body. Push your legs. Stand upward, young extension, and sink. Ah. Feel yourself sinking even deeper into your legs, feeling that yin support. Feel its effect on your hands. Feel the energy in your legs and in your feet. You can press down with your toes and just get the feel of the of the of the floor with that. When you press down with your toes, feel what that does in your hands. Because we have, by filling up with this much chi, then you start to notice how interdependent every part of your body is. That state of wholeness, that state of, of vitality, of Jing Shen, that spirit of vitality. Bow down. So actually, we're going to keep you with that. Push away with your right leg and then uh, spiral down to the left and then turn and step in. Now we're going to let all that go. And deep breath. And uh, sink. And disappear the chi. Relax. Really feel the, the calm, centered feeling that comes with being in this state. Please take a seat. Hmm. Well, that was like no press I've ever done before. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that with me. Rick. I've noticed when I do this with you, with you on Tuesdays, oftentimes in the midst of the highest chi energy, my lips start to feel, they don't quiver, but internally they're quivering. I feel the <laughs> flow. Is that, is that me or normal or what? That, that, <laughs> that's, that's a beautiful thing. Oh, good. That's a beautiful okay. thing. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, sometimes I'll feel my teeth, feel the chi in my teeth. You know, it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> things, are, things, are, things are connected up now. <laughs> so, yeah, it's beautiful. Peter. Yeah, that was, uh, that was encouraging. You know, I was a little shaky on the left, right. I wasn't clear, you know, but, but I hung in there. I started to feel something, some activation or flow of energy. And then at the end, when we were standing with feet even and, uh, and sinking, uh, and when you said to feel the energy in your hands when you flex your toes, reach down your toes, it was very strong, the, the flow or activation of energy in, in my hands. Yes. So I feel like, wow, this is real. This is um, <laughs> this is uh, this is something to really um, pursue. Uh, I, that, that that's a beautiful statement there. That's it's like real. <laughs> that was probably the most astute statement in the last year <laughs> since I've been doing this. Is that it's. That this is real. <laughs> <laughs> Valerie, you had something. Uh, oh. I, was, <laughs> uh, I, found, I found that I really, uh, I found that there was a 
very large part of it was mental, it was the mental letting go, just really picturing everything just kind of dropping. I found it was that was like most 70% or more of it to me. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Valerie. Um, a lot of times when we get done with these exercises, I'm so high that it takes me a bit to, you know, be able to talk or, you know, put thoughts together because I'm just so expanded. I feel just as expanded, but very coherent. So it was, you know, like I said, stupid simple. But um, very valuable, very valuable. Beautiful. I think you're, you're, you know, you're, you're hinting at something there, and that is, if you can cultivate the substantiality of the yin, that it allows you to operate in the real world <laughs> um, with more finesse. You know, you are, you're able. It's, it's, it's not that just all young expansion. It's like, no, no, you know, there's, we're in the world of stuff too. And, and stuff must be given its proper respect. So, uh, <laughs> so we, uh, being able to articulate is, is super important. And the more we can cultivate that yin, the, the more we're able to, to, to put things in little boxes and, and, make nice little presents for others and things like that. Richard, you had something. Oh, Sharon, 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 Sharon. Sharon first. Um, I appreciated when you invited us to uh, feel our toes, press our toes into the, the ground. And things were very different the moment I did that. Nice, yeah. nice, nice, Thank great. You. You, you bet, that, that, that's great, cool. Richard. Um, <clears throat> I just wanted to say that um, this is one of those, this is one of those experiences that uh, those of us who've studied for many years have heard this so many times before, but it's becoming so powerful for me. And that's the every action begins with its opposite. Um, that is just getting more and more um, embedded with me because of its power. Uh, and almost everything we did tonight begins with a little bit of its opposite. And nice. So nice. thank you. That, that's really, I'm really incorporating one of these principles that I've heard for 30 years. Yeah. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Terrific. Terrific. Beautiful. Cool. Okay. Thank you all so much. This has been, uh, been terrific. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Love, thank love you, you all. Thank, thank you, Maria. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Maria. Thank you, Maria.